Land use planning correctly demarcated the boundaries and administration areas between villages and in agreements with all neighboring villages. Now it reduces deforestation turned into livestock farming for the markets. In general, it became better. Land use planning has a long-standing history in Lao PDR and has been applied in a variety of forms across the country since the 1990s to improve sustainable and systematic planning of land use and allocation of land. Participatory approaches and the application of modern technologies have been increasingly integrated into land use planning in recent years. One of these approaches applied in Lao PDR is participatory land use planning and participatory agricultural land management or PLAPOM, which is implemented by the Lao government with support of the GIZ land program within the frame of the global program responsible land policy since 2017. This case study aims to show how participatory land use planning can have a positive impact on public service delivery and rural communities and thus contributes to wider sustainable development by spotlighting positive application examples of the Plop Palm approach. Prior to Plop Palm, land-related issues such as tenure recognition, boundary conflicts, proper zoning, and planning for agriculture and investments, and equal rights to land are often not addressed. With land use planning, the villagers now know how to make use of the land appropriately and without conflict. Forest and land protection help preserve our lands, especially watershed and protected areas. This benefits the environment and forest. For the investment and production, we can now allocate the land accordingly and make the government and private sector understand thanks to the support from GIZ. In the past, boundaries were unclear for the production areas between villages. But after land use planning, the boundaries became clearer. Whatever investment projects, they now follow the allocation from the land use plans. This also reduced boundary conflicts between villages and villages or districts and districts. The land use plans are also integrated into our Provincial Social Economic Development Plan. Plapam contributes to the protection of forest areas and the environment. Land use planning allows authorities to identify forest lands and watershed areas and draw clear boundaries between conservation and productive lands. According to the annual report to the Provincial Assembly, Huapan province aims to achieve 70% land coverage with forest. As the representative of the Provincial Agriculture and Forestry Office in Huapan explains, the report also mentions that currently 60% of the land is covered with forest, and before the start of Plop Palm, it was only 50%. However, illegal logging remains a challenge, especially in areas without proper planning and follow-up. The areas that are eligible for land titling are clearly identified, such as multi-purpose land, which serves as the basis for the land registration. In 2016, the awareness raising was not as elaborated as the current one, which we have started conducting since 2021. We have been trained on awareness raising and the usage of tools such as visualization, video projection. All are more advanced tools that helped villagers to understand easily. Since the project implementation, gender equality is made aware. No matter the gender, ethnicity, social status, 
we have raised the topic of equality and involvement when we conduct. We have digital data and hard copies that we can share to the investors from local and international. The data we have in store tells us which area is for agricultural investment and we can allocate accordingly. Land use planning can be integrated into the Provincial Socio-Economic Development Plan. Another benefit of land use planning is it allows us to know where the area for investments are or for development or public and private land. For a provincial department of planning and investment, we see its importance in allocating areas for private investments. And before approving each project, we have to agree on the types of activities and the type of land among the eight types. The participatory land use planning, or PLAP, is the tool used for the planning and zonation at village level of the eight main categories of land use, like agricultural land, forestry land, construction land, and others. This includes the steps of village boundary demarcation, current land use mapping with zoning of land use, and future land use mapping. The participatory agriculture land management, or PALM, is used for further detailed planning of the agriculture land and production. Land use planning correctly demarcated the boundaries and administration areas between villages and in agreements with all neighboring villages. Now it reduces deforestation turned into livestock farming for the markets. In general, it became better. The result of land use planning is that our citizens have gained access to land and have recognized their own rights to the property. They can generate income for their family via livestock and farming using their land for agricultural production. In the past, we had some, we lacked some. Now we grow mushrooms, cassava, vegetables. We used to only have traditional ways of handling rice field. Now we can produce more. Now we know how to do farming properly. With the project that came to support, we can produce more from our rice field. In the past, we only rely on the season to plant and to harvest. Now the production quantity is different. As shown, Plot Palm can have several direct and long-term positive impacts. The successful use cases include village boundary demarcation and regulated land use policies reduce land conflicts. Plot Palm contribute to the protection of forest areas and the environment. Land use planning improves land tenure security, enable land registration and sustainable investments in land. Club Palm facilitates the integration of special dimensions into further planning processes. Land use zoning allows for the appropriate selection of land for development and allocation for investments. Club Palm facilitates agricultural transition and income generation through commercial agriculture. So there have been obviously quite some experiences here in the land sector concerning land use planning, not only from the GSZ land program, but also from, from so many other actors in the sector. And I think what is quite clear is to make land use planning effective in the sense of producing real impacts to the lives of the people at the local level, certain factors certain requirements need to be in place and I'm not talking only about uh, governmental authorities needing the financial resources, the equipment, the respective training but also things like um, the various sectors need to be involved in the procedure. We really need a honest and deep community involvement 
because if communities don't agree to the planned decisions on land uses in the village, there will not be any change of land use as such. So what we also could see is that land use plans as standalone measures do not really guarantee it's a real change in the village. So the linkage actually between the land use planning step and then the follow-on activities like land titling or forest conservation measures or as well agriculture extension, um, they are so important to really make the change. And this is what we have to make sure that land use planning comes with strong linkages, with follow-on activities to make income generation possible, but also, for example, uh, environmental protection. And if you look at the time leading dimension, if we want to make sure change of land uses also persists at mid and long term, then we have to ensure a close follow-up, a monitoring, a regular monitoring and also a review of the plans as such and um, a continuous communication, continuous discussion with the villagers. Following the land allocation master plan since 2018, our Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment continues with the provincial land use planning accordingly. We have succeeded for provincial scale, which is 17 provinces and one capital. Moreover, with the Ministry's support, our Department of Land will continue on this strict level and aim to complete in 2024 for all districts nationwide. Our land law revised in 2019 has also indicated clearly that the land use planning must come before land registration. The plot palm activity at village level plays a key role and in good alignment with the land allocation master plan in the context of enhancing land management and land development in the current phase. Four points that I would like to share. Firstly, such activity serves as the basis for land use and land management in the future, such as land registration, agriculture extension, forest conservation plan, and agroforestry production. Secondly, agriculture extension is one important element to the activity which was extended from land use planning. The extension proved that the land use plan has been practical and could benefit other activities as well. Thirdly, another highlight is the land use information system database which stores villages plot palm data. The data are essential for sharing across sectors. And finally, I would like to express gratitude to our supporter and donor, the government of Germany, and I'm looking forward to our further cooperation as well. Plot Palm has been rolled out in four provinces in around 260 villages and supported by different donor institutions and with governmental budget in the northern part of Laos. For its long-term anchoring in the land sector in Laos, the responsible ministries cooperate with the National University for its incorporation in the curricula. It can be observed that when supporting the required success factors, La Palm contributes to the implementation of national policies like the protection of land tenure rights, forest protection, as well as conflict resolution and income generation, and with this also long-term sustainable development.